Hello and welcome to the first episode of Techpreneur Show, powered by Geekotech. Today we have with us one of the biggest techpreneurs from India, Mr. Alok Kejriwal. Mr. Alok Kejriwal is he you know he has been into business for quite some time, 26 years long journey. He started from joining father's socks manufacturing business, and you know from there at the age of 21, after working for 10 years, one bright morning he got up and you know thought about something. He said. Am I going to make socks for the rest of my life? And that was the transition point. Post which he went on to establish one of the most, you know, successful companies, contest companies, that is Contest to Win, and which used to host contests for brands in an interactive manner. After this success, there was no turning back. He went on to the road of serial entrepreneurship and established three more companies, that is Mobile to Win, Media to Win, and Games to Win. Mobile to Win is a wonderful, was a wonderful company and was bought over by Disney and Sir claims that he got lucky but we feel there is definitely something magical about this and it's not just the lucky factor. So you know he post which he also has a community of for entrepreneurs co-learning which is known as the Rodin Hoods. You know he himself has came to be known as Mr. Alok Ro Rodin Hood KG1 and you know enough said let's hear this his story from his own mouth. So, uh, sir, first question, the first question I have to ask you. So, the entire journey. So, how was the journey for you? If you have to narrate in three or four minutes, how would you narrate? So, you know, the journey has always been, uh, there's no journey that is a journey without a lot of pain. And I think any entrepreneur knows past, present and future that life is pain. Right? Buddha said that life is full of problems. Right. To begin with, life is full of misery. But Buddha also said that there is a cause of me is misery and there is a cure of misery. Right. So in the same way, if I use the same metaphor for entrepreneurs, right? Entrepreneurs know that what they are getting into is not going to be easy. But there is a method to make that that pain or that problem get solved and there is a fun in it. So the journey has been a lot of learning and it has been a constant self-correction. So, you know, I would consider it like a machine learning, you know, as we say in computers, AI. The machine or the bot never stops learning. It's almost like, you know, giving a, a, a super computer, a brain of an entrepreneur and say, now tell me, when are you ready? It will never be ready. Even a grandmaster keeps learning steps to play a chess game. So, I think entrepreneurship is the greatest lesson that you can ever learn. It's a university that never stops teaching you. It's a course, graduation course that never gets over. Uh, at least at a granular level in my life, you know, four or five incidents that I remember, not incidents, but it, you know, themes. One is that if you do good work, it never goes unrecognized. That period of recognition takes time. Sometimes it's instant, so people are lucky. Right. Sometimes it takes forever, so you get worn out. But it does come. The second thing is that, you know, this concept of shortcuts. A lot of people, especially youth in today's market, they want to do shortcuts. That is really tough. Because shortcuts never deliver any result. And I mean, if you see the pain that everybody has gone through, whether it's, you know, in a history book, I read it, right? He was Muhammad Ghazi, or Ghazi, who he tried to attack India a hundred times. He, I don't really know the story, but it was very famous. He tried to climb over the wall hundred times before he came to India. It's a, Mo it's a Mughal emperor. Okay. From his day to, you know, what we see today. So the shortcut doesn't exist. And I think that's a challenge that a lot of young people have to overcome. The third thing is, you know, this concept of entrepreneurship itself. Right? A lot of people are enamored by the concept, not by what it means. You know, it's like saying, I like to be in love, not knowing what love is. You know, at 14 or 15, every teenager says, I have to love me. 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 Exactly. So that concept is very. It's very nice to talk about, but very difficult to implement. Mm -hmm. But you have to do it to understand what it is. Now, from a point of view of you know our country and how interesting it is, you know, it's I think it's a haven for entrepreneurs because a we are all young. We have not got very old and young and disparate communities. The whole country is under thirty-five mm -hmm. and even more under seventy. Right. Two, I think as an Indian community, we all know that technology, new things come very easy to us. You know, right from a watchman to a taxi driver, you know, you see them playing games on Android. So, we adapt very fast. Right. 
So if you would say, ki, you know, where should be the best place to start entrepreneurship, it would be India. The most fertile ground ever. And people accept. The challenges are, you know, the similar, same, same thing. How do I convince parents? How do I tell people who are married or spouse that boss, what do I do? Why am I starting up? You know, India has always had, at least in the IT sector, we've always had some very good jobs coming up. So, that's what I'm doing, right? How do I do the job in the job? For which I feel there's always a time. You know, if you can time yourself, like you young guys, right? I mean, between now to 10 years, do everything. It doesn't have to be like, first I do entrepreneurship, then I do a job. Whatever comes your way. But I think to end the lesson, I think you have to taste this desert once in your life. Then whether you eat it again and again is your call. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, sir, uh, if I talk about, you just talk about the journey. So, if we say, you know, experiences, sharing about experiences, uh, can you share one good and one bad experience which you remember from your time? So, actually, um, I'll combine them with one experience which actually turned out to be very bad and very good. It's an interesting question. So, in 2006, you know, we were very lucky. I said again, we, get, we got very lucky with Disney buying out mobile even in China. But we had even, uh, we had a really good company in India called Mobile in India. And uh, it was doing very well. We were the sole, uh, uh, you know, franchise of Indian Idol. We had a Indian Idol voting on the SMS platform. And I'm going to that we had beat Star because Star used to do KBC, Landline. Hmm. And nobody used to get through the call. Okay. You remember. Yeah. So we had tried to get over that problem by SMS. It was a very interesting time. Good idea. And some VCs began to hover around the company, right? Because they felt that it was a very juicy and very profitable company. So one day came when you know, they said, boss, we want to invest in the company, we want to invest in the people, we want to invest in the technology, but we don't want to we don't want you. Hmm. And that was a very <coughs> horrible experience because you know to be told right on the face that you know they don't value you, but they value what you have done. It's fair, but it's not nice. And it became worse when they dragged me out of the company. So, you know, in all venture capitalized companies, you have these clauses called drag out and, uh, you know, uh, you can drag the entrepreneur out. So, I was dragged out. So, I became a dollar millionaire because of that transaction. But the good news was that I got paid a lot of money. But it was very painful because you don't care about the money. When you are building something good, then you are all in it for the good, right? I mean, right. the flip card entrepreneurs are again and again saying, because I could have sold any time, but they still had me on and make it bigger and better. So that was a bad experience. But what happened because of that outcome became a really good experience. So because I was freed and because I could not do mobile and I could not do mobile, anything to do with mobile, I was forced to look again with a with a with a you know magnifying glass of entrepreneurship on what I could do. Because everything was mobile. Today it's like saying, you know, you can entrepreneurship, but you can't do it internally. So, So, that made me get into desktop gaming, flash gaming, which became games to me, which seven years later I'm so proud about. Right. So, the baddest incident became the goodest incident. Right. Very well, sir. So, uh, you know, I've also read about somewhere that, you know, you were one of the entrepreneurs who survived dot com bubble. So, how was that experience you know, with the entire industry exploring? That's a great question and I think some of the best learnings come out of that and still remain true. First and foremost is don't get misled by, by what people tell you. All of us at mature levels are very, very, you know, we are endowed with, con with, with common sense. So, you know, you are a new, newly minted entrepreneur, MBA, you are a newly minted entrepreneur. We all have our limits. Now, if I tell you that if you have 100 rupees, you have 200 rupees, you will not do it. Similarly, if I am funded 100, how can I spend 200? So, they were led into, a lot of people were led into overspending because they were promised more money. The money mm -hmm. never came. So, lesson was never believe everything that sounds too, too good to be true because it's not true. Secondly, I think a lot of people even today don't understand what cost consciousness is. You have to be very cost conscious. When you become cost conscious in your mind, everything begins to then become calculable and uh, you know, something that you keep saying was, tell me why am I spending this money, isn't I have a return? Because your return based attitude that is very important to inculcate. 
and that they are dot-com bus stops. Hmm. And third is that you know you can't build biggest lesson. You cannot build a company to sell it. You have to build a company to keep it. Right. Someone should tell you to sell it to them. That was the biggest flaw in the dot-com model of 2000. That you know, you have to build it quickly. We say, you have to build it That is a lesson. So sir, Delhi se bana or hum rat lenge. So does that hold? Uh, does that still hold true? You know, in today's 2020, 2014. Very much, yeah. Boss, abhi Facebook is a 2007 company. Ab usme log log ab analysts aa rahe hain. Bol rahe hain boss, ab ye banega, ye media company banegi, ye but Twitter now it's catching fire, right? Google is a 2004 company. Right. Yahoo is a 2004 company. So, if you look at the iconic brands in our life, any brand is more than 7-8 years. Coke is of course hundreds of years and blah blah blah. Nothing that comes and goes, I mean you know, the baddest example I can give you, although I am a gaming guy, is like, you look at Farmville, hmm. came and went, hmm. boom. You know, now we see Crush, Candy Crush getting crushed, hmm. IP was completely tanked. So, what comes in a hurry goes in a hurry. Hmm. That's the big challenge. So, Young people are very averse to staying and putting 10 years of their life behind an idea. Hey, are kya you know, we had a, as a joke, I had a very young lady here who had come once to pitch some business to us. And uh, she has a consulting guy as usual, right? And then I introduced her to a colleague and I said, this guy has been there for 15 years. So she said, oh my god, that's even longer than what marriages last. <laughs> I was so stunned, you know, I said, hey, Papa, you know, what is this lady saying? And she was married. <laughs> You know, that's too long, you don't even have to for that long. Okay, so you know, marriage is a job, but it's not a job. So I think the level of patience has gone now. You need to get patience up again. Right. Uh, so, Sir, so, 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 moving on to the next question. If you talk about, you know, uh, consumer psyche, since gaming is, you know, on an international level, other games like Parking uh, Frenzy. Frenzy, yeah. Parking Frenzy and other games, everybody is actually playing it. So, uh, how is the psyche of consumers abroad different from Indian psyche when we specifically talk about this industry? That's a good question again. So, there are two ways to look at it. Right? The good way, the one way is to say that all consumers are the same. We all play Subway Surfer. We all play, you know, Candy Crush. We all play Angry Birds. Why? Because it's fun. So, fun is universal. The language of fun is universal. If I make you hear a Brazilian song which have a good beat, you start dancing. You know, Hindi is, Bhangra is everywhere in the world. Right. So, in the, the good news is that entertainment, which is equal to fun, is global. Mm -hmm. And where it's not spoken and read, it's very easy to translate. Okay. On the flip side, yes, there are nuances, there are certain things that you can't do because you're in India. Especially the fact that game design, the fine, the fineness of how you level up a game. These are things that take a lot of skill. But again, yeah, the internet is all open. Games are all open. You can go out to any app store mm -hmm. and look at a game very easily. Right. Nothing stops you from analyzing a game. If you and I play Candy Crush mm -hmm. or a Clash of Clans, we can look at everything that the game has done. Mm -hmm. So then it's easy to replicate. it. So the global knowledge platform is there for us to see. It is a patience to implement it. And if you talk about in terms of revenue you know, generated from the in-store, in-app purchases, does it differ? Very much. So India is one tenth of the way people would spend in America because we are not used to spending money on virtual things. We are not used to spending money first and foremost. <laughs> so why should I spend on virtual things? Right. And having said that, also culturally we are saying, yeah, free me de do yaar. Me do aise do. Hamko free ki ticket chahiye, free ka khana chahiye, free ka you know rehna chahiye, to free ka game bhi chahiye. But the volume is great, na. So you can make up for volume, but you can't make up for for value. Right. So it's a volume and value. Right. And you can't get 10,000 people to download a game of cricket anywhere in the world but in India. So, <coughs> so sir, uh, moving on, uh, you know, uh, again there was a transition from PCs to tablets, tablets and you know, smartphones. Since you said, you know, it's a flash gaming uh, it was. It <laughs> was. Yeah. So, how did that affect it? Very, very, very good question and very tough question. This was one of the toughest things that we've ever done and still doing. So, we moved from where we were a web company, very happy. We were teaching, reaching almost 4 to 5 million uniques on Comscore, huge success. 
And then one incident happened in my house. Very funny incident. So we have, you know, we used to have desktops, which is why I started a desktop company. Then suddenly I noticed that my kids have two girls. Mm-hmm. They used to not, they, when I got my laptop home, they would use the laptop. So I understood that convenience is more important than form factor. Because laptop is always small, desktop is always big, but they were choosing convenience. Then they used to fight over the laptop. Kis ke paas laptop, hai, chalo, kudu, kudu. Mm-hmm. Fir, himat kar kar char laptop aave ah. Suddenly, one day, we, I heard one thing that shocked me. You know? So laptop at one time used to be so difficult to find because everybody was running after it. One day my wife asked my daughter, where is the laptop? And she said, no, ask Mala, we have a domestic help. She said, ask Mala where the laptop is. So I said, if Mala is the person who knows where the laptop is, then the laptop is not significant. Right. Because everybody had moved to mobile. So we obviously took our best games and started taking them to mobile because the consumer was the same. That was the good news. Mm-hmm. If the consumer was the same, we would have been in trouble. You know what I am saying? That, Alok, now go from desktop to console, we would have died. So we were always a single game company, remained a single game company, so it became pretty okay. It, did it increase or was it stable? The desktop business? The mobile the, business. The mobile business increased. Yeah, it, Oh yeah, it, it grew very well, but let me be honest, the flash business has suffered. How fast was the fall? Gradual, but over every year we've been degrowing 15 to 20 percent. Not a good thing at all. It's tough. It's tough. Very, very tough. So sir, you know, we've talked about a lot of things. Now uh, for some something for the tech trainers basically, the entrepreneurs I must say. So the community that is growing goods. So how did that happen? So I always felt that there was something missing in my life. I was not able to co- contribute to community. I was not able to give back. You know, I'm not the kind of guy who goes to hospitals and give clothes and medicine. I can't do that. I have a problem. I get, you know, I, I, I'm, you know I've grown, grown up in a bubble. So I, I get offended when I see misery. Like Buddha again. So I said, boss, what can we do? That we don't have to do that. Then it became occurred to me that all the knowledge I have, all the lessons I have, all the pain I have learned, share that. If you can give the knowledge away, then you can help people without having to meet them. So I began to write a blog called Rodin Wood. Rodin is the thinker, Augustine Rodin's thinker, you know. And Robin Hood is the the guy who stole things. So it was thinking and doing which became Rodin Hood. That's the concept. So once that came around, then it began to flow and then one day again I said, yeah, you know, one man will never be able to achieve anything. So I opened up the community on our social networking platform and that became plural. So we moved from singular to plural. That was the biggest idea I think I ever had because then everybody helps everybody and I am insignificant in the matter. So teams make dreams come true. Correct. I'll say. So, angel investor, entrepreneurial capital. So, and uh, you specifically mentioned that you do not like to be called a VC. Correct. So, and the mentoring part. Right. So, what's this part all about? So, the path is very simple, right? I think India very, very badly lacks what I call entrepreneur capital, which is that capital provided by entrepreneur, not by venture, venture. Vapor, vampire, people who have no intention of your goodness, they are more intentful about their goodness. So when you meet someone, right, as a friend, those kids are better. They are very much because he means well and you mean well. Those things that right. A business meeting mein jaate, why are you tense? Because he wants something from you, you want something from him, and it's a transaction, right? A God forbid, if a blackmailer ke paas first guy. So he wants everything you have without you getting anything in return. So very often kya when someone pays money to you to run a company, their interest is not your in, in your personal development. Your their interest is by 10x milega. Mm-hmm. And then the conflict begins. Now the entrepreneur knows what the problems are. So I think entrepreneur capital is like softer capital. It's friendlier capital. Even in Muslim countries they have that thing now, kya bolte hai, wo, uh, without interest. Uh-huh, they give up money. They, give, they are not allowed to take interest. Right. I love that. Th- from a thought point of view, it is very noble. 
Okay, then you know everybody gets a free chance. So in this way, the idea is to merge and also let's remember that when an entrepreneur will give a capital without that demanding nature, then he will have to mentor the company. Because if he gives his money back, then he will give his money back. There are very heavy, very fat volatile VC. He has said that I will give it to him, I will give it to him, I will give it to him. So he doesn't care. Here you care. So angel, the mind of an angel is the heart of an entrepreneur and the wallet of a capitalist. That is what the combination is. It just came out. I'm still in. Yeah, try it. Absorb. It just came so much. So, sir, I will, you know, we talk about lean startups, bootstraps, you know, Bootstrapping, guys. Right. Start. So, if we talk about the VC funding versus the bootstrapping, what would you suggest? See, it all depends on your own capability of raising money and executing to the money. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the e-commerce guys, they're the reverse of any bootstrapping people, right? Mm-hmm. They're not done. They've gone all out. Or बहुत सारे लोग हमारे जैसे हैं जो बीच में bootstrapping भी करते हैं, VC भी करते हैं. और बहुत सारे और लोग हैं जिन्होंने VC पैसा कभी नहीं लिया है, and yet they're doing so well. So it's all your personal interest in personal belief. You know, I for example cannot spend 100 crores a month on advertising because I don't have the guts. Some people can. I can lose 25 crores a year in a month in, in, in losses. But some people can. You know, it's very ordinary to lose 300 crores for people. So it's your own gut feel, it's your own capacity, it's your own drive. As long as you can turn that money into positive. So it's like this, right? Today if I take 300 from you, Maybe my capacity is to make it 3,000. But if I take 300 crores from you, then I should have the capacity to make it 30,000 crores. If I take 30 rupees from you, it means I have the answer. Correct. Yeah. Right. So, sir, so, uh, one thing I missed for the last question was mentoring. Me. What happens is if you have two, three mentors, Correct. and one is yourself, and we say we are the best judge of our decisions. So, uh, how that conflict happens? Ki boss kis ki baat mani and uh, who is that person who is right? Uh, there is something you have already written about this furnace test, naivety. So, uh, so how does it, you know, all that? So, there are, the, that's a, again a very pointed good question. I think the real trick is to learn who to ask what question. When it comes to common sense, you have to ask yourself. Because am I doing the right thing? Am I stretching this business too far? Why am I getting up in the morning and doing it? You should I have ended. No mentor can tell you. He will give all, you know, rubbish. But if you talk to a mentor and say, how do I make an offer to a co-founder? If you don't have the experience, how can you contribute to the discussion? If you are not flown a plane, you will not go in the cockpit. So there, you have to basically ask the mentor to help. Tomorrow if you are saying, you know, uh, how do I pay salary to myself, it's your capacity. If you feel you want to pay to very cheap justice to your startup, then you don't take salary. If you ask your mentor, what will you get? He will say, first, how do I know? So I think that question, the problem arises when people ask the wrong people the wrong question. What they should be answering themselves, they are asking the mentor. And what they are asking should be, asking the mentor, they are asking themselves. That is where the problem starts. You know, I mean, yourself and your co-founder, boss, if you have grown up in engineering college, if you have good friends, if you have buddies, if you have, you know, drunk and together and fought and cried together, then how can a mentor create equation between you? I'm going to tell you, like two of you, right? I don't know where your backgrounds are. You're two good guys, that's all I know. Like, if you say, I don't help us with equity, how do I know? Yeah? What have you learned? By the time I learn and unlearn, it, the time has passed. Right. And so, moving on with the, with the same question, Sometimes what happens is, you know, uh, when you are under mentoring, so you get so much used to, you know, taking advice from the mentor that you go on asking everything from him and you are kind of dependent and that kills your uh, the attitude. Nice. It's a very good point. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think again, that's the ability of the mentor, not of the mentee to turn off the tap, right? 
आप स्पिरिचुअलिटी में भी देखो द गुरुज नेवर गिव यू टू मच दे गिव यू जस्ट इन आफ्टर सर्व सो आई थिंक अ ग्रेट मेंटर इज द काइंड ऑफ गाय यू कैन टर्न ऑफ द टैप एंड से बॉस इनफ नाउ आई विल थिंक अबाउट सो सर अगेन द क्वेश्चन कम्स बैक टू द टेक इंडस्ट्री इन इंडिया दिस ई कॉमर्स और दिस सेट कॉमर्स एज यू से सो what is its future and with many of us you know in our mba discussion we used to have we say ankit himself used to say that this is going to burst one day so yeah so what's exactly its future? so you know i look i think this is a very tricky question because a lot of us have been proven wrong and a lot of us have been proven right depending on what side you are the concept that people will want to buy things at convenient in a convenient way is not going to ever go away It's human nature. It's common sense, as I said. Right. If I can get something sitting on the in my house, why will I not do it? Mm-hmm. Now the question is, what does it take to get it there? Mm-hmm. A lot of companies are burning cash to prove that they can become the top of mind brand. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the gut is that they will become the biggest brand because of price advantage. Mm-hmm. Is that will that remain? We don't know. So if you are fighting an e-commerce battle with only price as your point of value. Then you are fighting a battle with a really risky weapon. The weapon may vanish. Right. If some people are fighting a battle with a very strong proposition, like Mintra, I can fashion you better than anybody else. I can provide you a value that nobody can give you. You know, I can style you. Then, then it may not be prices. Then you are fighting a concept that you know H and M and Zara won't come and eat your lunch tomorrow. So I think e-commerce has now the concept. The fight has gone deeper into. What is it? What barrel are you standing on, and how shaky, shaky is that barrel? If your barrel is only because you've got rich investors, then that's really shaky, because investors are the first to turn away and run away. They are the most disloyal people to entrepreneurs. So I think the the to answer very pragmatically, e-commerce per se is never going to go away. But I think the challenge is all the entrepreneurs trying to execute in that space. Do they understand what? Battle are they fighting? You know, have they gone to battle of Pani Par, thinking they are in Waterloo? Right. Then you are in trouble. You know, some people are fighting price wars without having the capacity to fight it. So then you are in trouble. So, what what would be your you know suggestion to people out there if if we are someone is entering into the space and the space is highly complicated? You know, take take for example the space of T-shirts business, sure, you know, customize or some uh, whatever the designs they are selling. So there are n number of people entering. You know, even the MBA people are themselves getting into, and the well-established companies are already there. So, so what would be your advice? I think you know, don't you know, the the big advice is don't force entrepreneurship on yourself. People are taking on to think, "Yeah, I'm so very good entrepreneur." Just be honest. I mean, that's just like the Gangga Ji, I'm not here. तो कुछ क्या है मत ना हो यार कुछ नहीं होगा यू स्टिल भी साफ सुथरा डोंट वरी सेकेंडली आई थिंक अलॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव जस्ट स्टॉप इमेजिनिंग आइडियाज एवरीबॉडी हैज गॉन इनटू दिस ओ माय गॉड एवरीथिंग इज ग्रेट ई-कॉमर्स इज ग्रेट आई मीन देन यू आर नॉट एंटरप्रेन्योर यू आर अ कॉपी कैट देन यू शुड बी लाइक यू नो अ जेरोक्स मशीन एंटरप्रेन्योर्स थिंक ऑफ ग्रेट आइडियाज एंड इंप्लीमेंट देम राइट दैट्स व्हाई यू हैव एन ऐप यू हैव अ इंस्टाग्राम यू हैव अ फेसबुक You know, Zuckerberg said, "How do I copy Google?" Then he would have been another dead duck. So I think the challenge is now a lot of these brains of our country are just about how do I copy the guy better? That's terrible. It's really insulting. And third, I think again, whether it's the e-commerce entrepreneur or the digital entrepreneur who's trying to do agency business, it's a very Indian mentality. We don't check the hard facts before we jump. Who poor man? कूदने के बाद सोचते कि पानी है कि पता नहीं पत्थर है पीछे दैट्स अ वेरी बिग वी डोंट एवर एक्साइट आवर नॉलेज वी डोंट गो इनटू द डेप्थ ऑफ द मैटर यू नो वी जस्ट वेरी कैजुअल इन आवर नेचर ऑफ अजम्पशन अजम्पशन इज आवर बर्थ राइट दैट्स व्हाट यू फील वी आर सो दैट कैचेस यू वेरी बैड वो सारा इट डिस्ट्रॉयज राइट अजम्पशंस सो सर 
since how many questions now? Since you are into entrepreneurship for the last twenty six years, so, so what are the most productive tools? Productive tools to in you know when you use while working, you would like to suggest some of them. Yeah, the most important productive tool is how to use your time. And is your your mind and your time management skill is very easy to waste time or very easy to so brooding. Thinking again and again of the same topic, getting stuck on the same conversation. What did the guy tell me? You have to be. You have to curate your mind. That's why I keep saying meditate, do be spiritual, do some ex- yoga because it trains your mind. So it's like a warrior, you know. When you look at people who are fighting jets or in jet, you know, flying jets, they have razor sharp concentration. They can't distract themselves because they have to. They die. So that's the discipline. The other tool, I think, is just constantly learning. A lot of us just feel that we are we belong to e-commerce domain, so games won't teach us anything. You know, we belong to games, so you know, fashion won't teach us anything. I think when we have to upset, spend a few hours a day just learning from other things and other people. That's also, I think, a self-development tool. And third, my humble opinion is. How to express yourself with a minimal clutter? People are so cluttered in their thinking, in their speaking, in their expression. That really irritates. It just to be able to be sharper and sharper in your speech, in your writing, in your thinking. That makes you much sharper. So these are all self improvisation tools. No, I mean I don't care about a gap or anything. Just keep on self improvising. So. Uh so last question which I would like to you know, ask is I, again you know I would seek your advice advice to the tech pioneers out there the young like the gen where which we say so what is the final advice to them if they are you know, planning to enter this industry specifically technology industry you don't listen to any advice <laughs> <laughs> all advice is okay you just have to advise, listen to your own heart's advice number one but if you really want to listen to some other important dictates you know, that the world has seen again and again and again, you know you have to be brave. Yeah. It's like you know watch Gladiator and Braveheart and become that. Become a gladiator in the ring. Nobody can teach you how to fight those animals when they come. You can get all the advice you can before you get there. But when they come, you have to fight. So I think the biggest thing is to not get afraid, because a lot of things happen that you are not planned for, and then there people say, "Yeah, I'm going to We didn't nobody knew this. That you know, I, I keep telling people after six months of getting funded for the first time, my VC went bankrupt. Now, boss, have you heard of that VC going bankrupt? Is a, never heard of that, right? हम उनको फोन कर रहे हैं फोन बज रहा है कोई उठाई नहीं रहा है अरे भैया क्या हुआ सर हम तो कंपनी बंद हो तो बॉस मैंने सिख सा कंपनी बंद हो I mean, very VC is bad, yeah. Our idea, oh, yeah. So, I think just be brave and be sensible. That's the two things you need to be brave and sensible. If you go with bravery and sensibility, you will win that war. So, sir, it was very wonderful Good. talking to you. Thank you. My pleasure and honor. He, he could take patience with you and he has no heights of success. Lovely. Thank you. We need that. And uh, obviously, the right side of the mountain is. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for watching the show, guys. Hope you find some value out of it. Do f- share it with all your tech pioneer mates so that they could also benefit from it. And don't forget to join the community. That is the Rodinotes.com. Definitely, it is going to help you. And one of the best communities around in India for entrepreneurs to join and take advantage. You can find all the links in the description below to follow us and Mr. Alok Robin Hood, Alok Robin Hood KGY. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time. Till then, it's me, Gaurav, standing off.